Space, the final frontier. Space Station Ashland sits on the edge of Federation space with its companion ship, the USS Delamus Christian. The space around them is full of mystery and strange wonders, where secrets are kept and danger lurks around every corner. The crew of the Delamus Christian must navigate treacherous waters as they work to protect the Federation. But as they peer into the unknown, they will discover that the line between friend and foe is not always clear. They will be tested like never before and will face challenges that will push them to their limits. Join us on this adventure as we explore the farthest reaches of space and uncover the hidden truths that lie within the shadows. Tabletop Journeys presents Star Trek Preservations. Welcome, travelers. This is Leo Anika of Tabletop Journeys, and I'm here with our inaugural edition of Star Trek Preservation's Quick Treks. These are short scenes with various crew members, pairings of crew members, whatever we think the story needs for a little extra development that didn't fit in the neat confines of a single episode. The idea here is to expand the Star Trek Preservation's universe in a way that's compelling, narratively driven, and adds some fun and development for both the game world, the characters, and for our players. Our cast members have done an amazing job with their characters and the story thus far. As a game master, just want to make sure they have every possible opportunity to expand their characters in all the ways that they may want to. And so this was a neat way to do that. Now that I've said that, let's introduce our two cast members and their characters for today's episode, and then we'll jump right into it. I'm going to take us from left to right as I see them on my screen. Hi, I'm Lacey Knutson, and I'm playing Lieutenant Narilla Nilan, our resident mad scientist of the crew. Excellent. And our next player... Hi, I'm David Ryder. I'm playing Lieutenant Avidian Tanari, the chief engineer of the Dolamus Christian, and I believe I'm still on hole cleaning duty after having taken the Dolamus Christian into the atmosphere last session. <laughs> <laughs> you are, but we are going to do a little timey-wimey today. <laughs> this scene is actually going to be set just after the away team departed the Delamas Christian, leaving Lieutenant Tanari in charge of the, of the DC as they go down to the planet to do their away mission. So we are actually doing our short, our, our quick trek, sorry, copy. We're doing our quick trek based on some things that were happening on board the ship while the away team was the focus of the primary episode. Along those lines, where we pick up is probably a few hours after the away team departs. Everyday world life on the Delamus Christian is what it is. Folks are doing things that they're doing. The engineering team has tasks that they're working on. Lieutenant Tanari is in command, but he doesn't necessarily have to stay on the bridge. It's a non-combat kind of scenario. You're in friendly territory. You're next to a friendly station. So that while there is an amount of, I need to be in the chair while I'm in charge, it is not a requirement for the CO2 to stay there the entire time. That said, Lieutenant Elon is in the science department working on various tasks as well. And it is here where we'll pick up. A communication ha comes through. The communication department sends that to the science room. It's not coded. It's not like high priority. Drop everything. But it is an it is a message. It seems important, and it is coming from Aslan Station. Is Aslan Station local to us right now? No, we're actually okay. fairly far away from Aslan Station at, at the moment. The communication you're receiving is from 
Aslan Station in specific, the Aegis program. Aegis, by the way, is something your characters would be aware of because it's fairly new. One of the things at the end of season one you did was complete all the phase one work for Aslan Station. One of the things that has begun in phase two is staffing the station. And the Aegis program is one of the elements of that staffing. So they're newly getting to the station. For the listening audience, the Aegis program is Advanced Engineering and Galactic Infrastructure Support, Aegis. The Aegis program is a Starfleet initiative designed to enhance resource management, repair capabilities at star bases, ensuring that they effectively support the fleet. The program's objectives center around optimizing sentient-led processes and technologies to maintain and repair starships and starbase infrastructure. That said, you have a communication from one of the three Aegis teams that have been assigned to Aslan Station. Aegis Team 2 is reaching out to you. And it's a live communication. It's not like a a letter. So they're basically effectively hailing you via subspace. Hi, Lieutenant. Thank you for taking my, my call. I am Cornell Johnson, and I'm one of the scientists assigned to Aegis, the Aegis program, Team 2, and we're having some questions and problems, and we were really looking, reaching out for some help. When we were looking at what we were trying to do, your name and your engineer's name came up several times, so... We had some questions, we weren't given great answers, and myself and my friend, and then he drags over somebody, and there's an Andorian there, there, who's there as well, and we're off time right now, but we really needed to figure something out. We weren't happy with what we were being asked to do, and we were hoping you might be able to give us a hand. be honest with you, something just didn't sit right, and I didn't care for it, and the strong silent type, this Dorian who presents female, their name is Ensign Chazans. She, they were pretty insistent that we figure this out before we do what we're told. And, and at this point, Chazans speaks up and they say, Starfleet regulations are very rigid, but they are often necessary. When I question whether we should or shouldn't do a thing, I think it's important that we confirm all possible avenues of investigation. I am the engineer for our particular team. Do you think that it's a good idea to bring Lieutenant Tenari into this conversation? I think that would be a wonderful idea. To have both of your inputs on uh, what we're dealing with would be nothing short of helpful. Uh, okay, one moment, please, and I'll um, use my communications to call to Lieutenant Tenari and request that he come to the science bay if he's available. Mm-hmm. All right. Confirmed. I'll be down there as soon as possible. Turn over to the helm. Ensign Chathaner, you have the con while I'm out. Aye, sir. And head down to the turbo lift. All right. You head down. A yeoman is uh, walking with you, basically asks you to, to give your uh, approval on a couple parliamentary, documentary types of things. There's a few communications from the planet. Basically, they send up their everything okay in orbit. You guys report back all those standard type things. Basically, Leave. before I sign, I'll look over at the yeoman and say, there's nothing here that's going to – if I sign, I'm going to get court-martialed over. Is there – The yeoman looks at you. I'm like – I've yet to see somebody court martialed over these types of things, unless your last name is Kirk. Good enough for me. He <laughs> <laughs> got it. Oh, there was a one weird one though, and this is a this is a separate thing. Scrolls to that, and he says, uh-huh. "We have been noticing pockets of data leaving the security station at odd intervals." With all the extra processing that Lieutenant Najar had been working on for whatever he was working on for. I'm not privy to those details, sir. But there seems to be a bit of a backlog and the computer wanted to either isolate the the logs on those outgoing station packets or delete them for space concerns. All right. Take a look at them real quick. Do they look like... Did they Were they coming from... Were they coming from Najar's 
station? Najar's no, no, they're coming from the post. Like, if you recall, Volanus Christian had to check in with the uh-huh. with the orbital security station. So these are things that are leaving the station and going out broadband, and the DC is clocking that these regular interval things, which did not start until after the DC got there, are going out, and the computer is basically doing something. The Omen is assuming it has to do with whatever investigation a jar is doing that's mm-hmm. taking up a lot of room in the computer. And so the computer basically auto-asked for permission to either archive or delete those, the logs on those outgoing messages. All right. I have the computer archive it and tag it for Najar's attention when he gets back. Nice, sir. And Turvalev gets to where it's going. You step out, mm-hmm. Turbolev closes, they go back to wherever they were, and you get to the science labs. All right. Lieutenant, what's up? Lieutenant, thank you for joining us. We got a call from, from Aslan Station, Aegis Team 2, and they requested our assistance. And I don't have much more information at this point, but hopefully they can fill us in together what they're hoping for. Certainly. <laughs> I will say something I didn't mention at the beginning of this episode, that we are starting this episode with one threat per player, so there are two threats involved. Uh, You didn't think there wasn't going to be threat and momentum, did you? (laughs) Did you think you were getting away with that? Because if you did, you were wrong. (laughs) Yeah, to quote quote Damon, homie, don't play that. (laughs) One thing we need to know, though. Yes. Any threat we accumulate now, is that going to roll over to Tobor's game? Ooh, that's an interesting proposition we had not considered. I tell you what, I will gladly do. So. You you can certainly leave him some threat. Uh, I will appreciate that greatly. That works well, for you. Yes, for the next team. <laughs> yeah, but what I will also do is any momentum you happen to generate, obviously at the end of a scene, one would go away, but any of that could carry over as well. So you can also benefit him in that way. That's, That's a very great kind question. and generous. Yeah. So he doesn't automatically shoot us yeah. up the airlock yeah. next yeah. second. All right. As you are, are in in the lab and Lieutenant Nealon introduces you to the folks on the screen, an Andorian ensign, they are a statuesque, present mostly female. Obviously, Andorians are a quad-gendered species, so the typical conversation of female-male doesn't make a lot of sense, though m- many will choose one or the other as far as their pronouns. Unannounced they is typically appreciated or approved. This particular Andorian ensign looks fairly stern, does not look carefree or volatile in any way. They seem very controlled. And one thing you will note as they move, as they are showing, because we're going to get into some things that you're able to see as they expand the camera view as to what they're working with. As they move, you will notice very fluid and controlled movement. It's just there's there's very little that this individual does that's not precise. As far as Quanell Johnson, that's a human, dark skinned, short, textured hair, think mine without the gray, fairly young, probably in their twenties, maybe early thirties, depending. Hard to say exactly. Nothing like the twenty third and twenty fourth century to really do wonders for one's skin tone. But they also a scientist, but very wide eyed, very jovial, bouncy, almost like the polar opposite of the Andorian standing with them. But there is a you do sense a a connection. Just the way they play off each other there seems to be something that they do well together. Carnell just starts. Thank you very much. We really appreciate your being here, sirs. We had a couple of tasks that our team was asked to investigate. Most of the implica- implementation was completed when our team got to the station, and but we were in- assigned inspection duty to make sure everything was working before we go to the Admiral and put it online. And quite honestly, sir, the Admiral scares us, and we didn't want to get this wrong. The cook in the mess hall said something about the last engineers that screwed up on a station were basically cleaning bilge pumps at the bottom of the station for half of a cycle. And uh, I don't do well in bilge pumps, sir. I really don't do well in bilge pumps. There's a lot of pressure. Uh, Well, first of all, Anson, don't worry too much. I blew up the station. I'm still okay. You did what, sir? I blew up the station. But the station's still here. Well, a portion of the station. 
And at this point, the Andorian says, you did what, sir? It was during the subspace conference. Oh. Oh. You're that lieutenant? Yes, sir. Yep. Wow. That is probably the most expressionary moment you've seen out of this Andorian yet. They look at each other and say, Len, I think we've come to the right place. <laughs> Let me tell you what we have going on. When we got here, we were told that new scanning protocols were being implemented in the station and shielding protocols. The shielding was to prevent problems with subspace distortions. We were told that they were online and they were working. The other thing we noticed is those same shielding protocols in conjunction with the new scanning protocols were not working well. A second set of orders came in just before we got here with a bunch of new process implementation and program implementation that came from the the group that was on a search mission of some kind. Again, we're not cleared for that, but we knew that those came in from what was the top, but then that leadership was changed over to the Dalamas Christian. We hadn't got any specific orders rescinding the older orders, but we are sitting here with these protocols and something's just not working well. It's like the shielding is impacting the scanning and the new protocols look like they may be impacting that in another way as well. We don't know how that's working together, so we were hoping you could help us figure out what we need to do to, one, get to figure out the priority and then to get those things working. Okay. Um, Do you have a log of what you've done so far? Investigate. We have notes that we've put, put together on some field tests on the shield modulation and some notes on the scanning isolated from each other and then while they were both on and then we have some computer modeling on what would happen with the new with with the new protocols that the search group had sent over that really makes everything not work well it would cause the shields to not work the scanners to give false readings if in conjunction but the shields will cause the scanners to give false readings anyway and or the shields won't work with the new protocols we're trying to we're being told that all three things have to work and our understanding is you've been able to find ways to get these things to work and we weren't sure if you were able to get them to work at the same time on your ship and if you could help us get them to work on this station i believe i know what you're talking about now lee just for my own memory these protocols they're talking about Are they the ones that I was messing with in a previous session that messed up the ship? Oh, absolutely. They're the ones that you determined were garbage and you didn't want anything to do with. And they didn't get the word to not implement them. So currently, all of those are on the station. And this is an inspection team who found a problem. Uh Nobody else has found this problem, just these two. And they're coming to you because they were told, just make it work. Uh Mm-hmm. And they didn't like that answer. They're outside of the box thinkers. And if you're an outside of the box thinker, who else do you go to but Neelan and Tanari? <laughs> um, yeah, we had some issues with those protocols also. And to put it bluntly, the protocols are trash. My suggestions are uninstall them and just go with the shield and sensor additions. Johnson looks at looks at his partner. He says, "Told you, hold on." <laughs> and what is a a nice linear chip? And he hands it over. Whew, yes, first edition hollow copy of Captain Planet. We actually found an old Earth satellite on on a previous mission we had on our last ship. And our captain let us get one, uh, get the a copy of it. So we have the first edition isolinear version of the entire Captain Planet series. Nice. It's pretty special. Yeah, last time I lost a bet, I had to fring mow some latinum over to a, a family member. Ah, it was the prize of my collection. I think getting rid of the protocol will work, uh, Lieutenant. Uh, We can certainly do that, but we're still having some struggles getting things calibrated. I guess I don't understand what the scanning is for, and 
is there any information that you can add or help us with that would help us fine tune the calibration on the scanning so that it doesn't impact the uh, the scanning they're talking about this is the epsilon scanning which they're probably not they are absolutely not read in I believe there's a lot of information on that scanning protocol that's classified I think you might have luck installing it if you can install it in a way that's isolated from any subs interference basically rather than tell them why they're installing it yep explain to them how we got it to work in this particular case if you're going to teach them how to do it and drop the why there's uh-huh. going to be three separate things basically a gated but it doesn't have to be linear uh, it, you can decide the order in which you want to do this challenge either one of you can take the lead on one of the three challenges but the other one has to do the third so basically you each have to be the lead on one and then the third one you can decide based on how you want to break this up so in no particular order challenge one is to either deceive them the person leading decides or convince them we're not going to tell you why and we're going to glance over that as though it's the why is unimportant and just get the job done so they either leave knowing they were told you ain't getting it or they leave thinking they got all the information they needed and there's no more uh from a this is a classified issue you don't want people knowing there's a mystery that is probably the best way to do that because if they think they got everything they needed then they don't go asking questions and you already know these are the two that would probably ask more questions that's one of the challenges and there will clearly be more complications possible with one way of doing it than the other we'll get to those specifics when we get to that individual challenge challenge 2 is the implementation piece that's more of the mechanical press this button connect this wire that type of thing both on the software and a physical type of thing to make sure all the pieces and parts move and work together in harmony uh and that's pretty straightforward the third challenge would be uh basically the science and setting of those parameters and protocols cuz they're looking for really on the epsilon side there was originally just bio information you now also have neuro scan information that can be added to that they didn't have that originally so you can literally upgrade what they're doing without them even knowing you're getting it upgraded and that there's that element which is basically set the parameters and set the protocol itself versus physically implementing so there's the the setting the doing and the managing are the three separate types of tasks. So the floor is yours. Who would like to lead what and which would you like to start with? Tanari's instinct would be first to tell them that there are things they don't need to know, but he understands that that isn't going to work in this situation. So he is going to his feeling is that he needs to unfortunately lie to these officers and skim over what is actually going on okay it, it goes against his values he has his orders okay so it sounds like you want to lead the management piece of this unfortunately i've been given the center chair so. all right you got it Lieutenant Anilan uh with the implementation and the protocol process piece which of those two would you prefer to lead I think that I would sell best at the setting protocols science piece okay. that's what I'm most familiar with Sounds good All right so that was and then that leaves the implementation piece up for grabs who will be leading that By the way, you can each assist each other. I just mm-hmm. it, it's all about who's leading more than anything else. I've been generally doing the implementation on our project, so I think I can handle that. Okay. Now, the order of merit, which of the three are we going to do first? I think we should deceive the last. <laughs> okay. But my thing was good. You can take I the lead. Gonna... You <laughs> I was going to try to get that out of the way. My concern is a complication to that might be making the other parts more challenging and difficult if we were to 
have problems getting them on board. I can go with that. And I think character wise, because it does go against Tanari's instincts, he would he might be putting that off a little bit. Okay. So let's go ahead and save that for last then. I really right, also so- wouldn't want to do that. It's totally <laughs> doesn't really love this choice that we're forced to make. Yeah, one would think preserving the secrecy and preserving one's values is at odds in this particular scene. Dang, somebody was great with that title. That, you now have the science piece and the implementation piece. I'm assuming you probably want to do the science piece first because you got to set that before you can set it up. But unless you wanted to do it the other way, set it up and then program it afterwards. That's your call. That sounds like a good order. All right. Lieutenant Neely, you are in charge. You already know all of the details involved in the biology. You already know all of the details involved in the brainwave analysis piece via all of the adventures surrounding the holodeck testing and all of that. You can certainly help them set that. You are aware that telling them how to do that will help, will also not create an Epsilon incident on your ship because you're not doing it holodeck style. One, you're just telling them how to program what they've got. Uh, And to your collective knowledge, there is no Epsilon protocol on Aslan Station. So this, in fact, would not create an issue for them. It would literally just set up the correct processes. So with that said, your challenge is not terribly difficult. It is only a two. You would be using Aslan Station as your, and I have to bring that up here, Aslan Stations would be what is assisting you in this particular case, because that is where the work is actually being implemented. And you can either choose to have them assist, or you can have Tenari assist. If And for a complication range, it's a 19 or 20. However, if Tenari assists, the complication is going to be an 18, 19, or 20 versus if they assist because they're directly there. So less chance of a complication if they're implementing with the equipment that they're using, if that makes any sense at all. Right. All right. Then I see what you're saying, but my gut instinct is to have the person I trust assist. I'm and- with you there because also it will make it, I think in the long run, plot-wise, it would make in real world terms, it would make it easier for us to keep the secret. Yeah, I think so too. So I think that's who I would like to assist. And I also would like to use bold science to buy a d20 and add to threat, which enables me to reroll. I love where your head is at. All right. The, as I said, the difficulty is two. Complication range is 18, 19, 20. You have an extra die to roll. Take it away, Lieutenant. Okay. And you said I, and bold science means I can re-roll, right? You can. I did, I'm assuming you're using reason science. Is that correct? Yes. Sorry. Yes. Okay. And uh, are you also using, what what focus would you be using in this case? Maybe do xenobiology. That'll work. So I got two successes, five and a 13 and i got a 17 as well okay and so no no complications two successes lieutenant tenari your role please okay i'm probably going to use reason science as well all right and i'd like to help her out by essentially writing a computer program so that i can use my computer's focus good okay that is a two so that is two successes so we're at four. Aslan Station will roll. We're talking about the science and computers on their end. So they have a target number of 18. They have rolled an 11. So that is five total successes, giving you two momentum. You have successfully provided the programming necessary to set the right parameters for this. And of course, as we previously stated, they are dumping the new protocols and implement stuff that came from the other group as trash. They're actually isolating that. And I didn't quite specifically mention it, but part of the 
management piece is giving them a viable way of saying, look, this isn't good, we shouldn't use this, and basically convincing Pritchard to say, nobody implement this ever again. Um, so that'll be that piece when we get there. So the science is done. You've got that in the right spot. We're moving on to the implementation, basically configuring the, the physical and, and the software, both the physical hardware as well as the software pieces, get them in place so that all of the parameters work and function properly. This is, for all the same reasons, a very similar challenge. It is going to be a three difficulty. Lieutenant Neely, you can also assist, but same thing. A, a 1920 standard complication range for this becomes an 18 if the person not on site assists. And of course, Aslan Station will be the ship, quote unquote, rolling on the end in the event of successes. Okay. I think for the same reasons that Neelan had me assist her, I will have her assist me. Okay. I think since we are remote on this end, I am probably mostly sending them a software patch. Okay. So again, I would hope that my computer's focus would be applicable. I dig it. For this. Okay. Then this would be probably reason engineering. I will use bold engineering to buy an extra dice. Joe is going to learn too. Yep. He's going to love you. You know how much Joe loves threat. Oh, yeah. All right. I'm going to re-roll one of those dice. All right. The re-roll came up a 20. Other than that, I got two successes. <laughs> that's, what I get, that's what I get for getting greedy. Yep, yep. All right, so we've got two successes. We need a third. Lieutenant Neelan, how would you like to approach the assist on uh, this software patch? Okay, so I think that... Let's see what I have. Maybe I can assist using reason engineering to um, look, compare some of the work we previously did with the, some of the stuff that... Tenari is doing now to ensure that there's no, like, mistakes. I like it. All right. Have at it. Your roll, please. Okay. All right. I got a four, so I think that makes it. All right. Four is a success. And so we're at three. As a station, we'll be rolling sensors and engineering in this case. And that's going to be a 19 total that they, is their target number. Aslan station rolls a 16 and you are successful with creating the proper pathways and setting up. I think your software patch is working. Their indicators on their systems are showing all green, no issues. They're very happy. Johnson, Ensign Johnson is excited at, at the prospect of having this go so well. And again, you just notice how controlled as the patch was going in there's a lot of instant and quick calculations and adjustments that had to be made according to your protocols including one minor issue that you caught that needed to be fixed uh, lieutenant neelan and they and you just noticed that and, and i gotta get that name right ensign designs just has zero panic in their process even as things really amp up in speed they're just very controlled and they're hitting things Ex very efficiently, but they just do what's asked. And again, their movements are very fluid. If you see computer expert jamming at keys like in a frantic way or like the Kermit uh, on the typewriter kind of thing or somebody who's busy doing all these types of things that you'll see on any number of procedurals or shows, that's one thing. But the way that designs is addressing the keys is very specific, very deliberate, but it is more akin to a concert pianist playing a deeply moving orchestral piece or where it's like you're getting all the boom, but you don't see like the force. It's like you hear the force, you get the results of that force, but it looks like placid calm on the surface of the water is just the way they address uh, the keys. With that piece is done and they look at you and like, I think this is going to work, but I got to ask, I don't understand what this is all for. We have some of the best sensors in the quadrant. Why the new protocols? What is, what's going on here? It's a strange space out there. We're in the middle of an area. You're in the middle of an area with a lot of subspace anomalies. Uh, we've 
look at our mission logs, we've come across temporal black holes before. We, Aslan Station ha- and the ships that support it, have requirements that the rest of the fleet doesn't. As I say that, <clears throat> would you be so kind as to begin your challenge? Now, your challenge for this is quite a bit more complicated. We are operating at a task difficulty of four. Your complication range is 18, 19, or 20. Shading this so they feel that they have all the right information is... How would, how would you approach that? I'm basically trying to approach this as using like some of the Dalamus Christian's previous more public missions and some of the unusual stuff we've come across to basically tell them that we're in an area of space where there is a lot of weird stuff going on, which is the truth, and that these sensor and shield modifications we're doing basically have to are are because of those, which in a way is part of the truth, but it's not the entire truth. Okay. Given that, I'm going to apply a scene trait Uh based on what you said, which includes your reputation that you gained during the Zindi incident and that reputation that has been called out a couple different times that even led to them reaching out to your group. They knew the papers that were written about some of the sciencey parts were definitely from Lieutenant Neeland, but they also know that you have a two-year track record in this area of, of study specifically for finding unorthodox solutions. They really felt that coming to the two of you made sense because they see themselves in the two of you. And in that regard, that difficulty is now going to drop to a three because of that reputational trait that you have, Tanari. And Lieutenant Elin, you will also have moving forward, by the way, you're going to have that trait as well because you've done a lot to up the ante in these types of scientific endeavors. You are basically subject matter experts. I'm also going to do something a little different as opposed to just allowing you with – the standard advancement rules <clears throat> moving forward you will also have a an extra focus that you never had and that would be uh, a focus in epsilon species detection with that your roles <laughs> do you feel a little bad that we're we're just lying to these scientists mm-hmm. that trust us so much and look up to us <laughs> How much, that, how much, and therein lies the extra complication, right? Yes. <laughs> how much momentum do we have? You are currently on two momentum and four threat. All right. I am going to make a spiel that my role should probably be daring command. I dig it. And I have a focus in composure. Also dig it. All right, so I am going to spend both momentum and one threat to get two extra dice. Okay. <laughs> because Tanari is not comfortable lying, and command is not one of his highest disciplines. Fair. Even if daring is. First of all, there's two successes. Excellent. Second of all, there's a 19 and a 20. Oh, yeah! Wait, did you re-roll one for the daring? Didn't you say? I don't have bold command. This isn't engineering. I don't get to re-roll. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yikes. <laughs> However, does Neelan get to assist me on this? Neelan does get to assist you. I think that the way that I might be able to assist... And I don't, and I haven't really delved into different attributes and disciplines in my roles in the past game. So tell me if this makes sense. But a present science to take a a leadership role, talking about how like we're all connected as a science community, and that we're really building upon each other's successes in our in different events that we've encountered, especially us on the Dilemmas 
Christian and try to support this building on the science. I love it. Absolutely love it. Okay. <laughs> That's a success. <laughs> We have our three. Now, with your two complications, I'm going to stow two as threat. Okay. And the other complication is they seem to, on face value, get it. But as we wrap up this scene and when we close, when they get there, you'll notice on the face of designs that they know something's up. You know that there will be other questions. There will be concerns down the road. So Future we'll problems. Keep, yeah. We so, can calm them down for now, but not in the long term. You totally snowed Johnson. Johnson's uh -huh. all about it. Uh, but there's something. And she can read my antenna. Pretty much. That's exactly where I was going with that. She picked up on it. Uh, it kind of checks out because she was the one who was saying that at the beginning that not trust, like, being giving commands that are maybe not the best commands and questioning commands and, and she's questioning us. Yep. Everything seems to work. They get all greens in the test environment. They are ready to go online. Johnson, thanks you so much for your time and, and just says, if we need some additional help or questions in the future, can we call on you again? Anytime. Absolutely. Thanks. And then as they're about to sign off, Tuzine says, Tuzine simply says, thank you very much for your help today. It's important for us to do well here. This is our first big assignment, and this will help a great deal. Um, I understand. Lieutenant Tanari, I, before we go, I just wanted to say that your work today, as well as yours, Lieutenant Nealon, is very reminiscent of one of my favorite quotes from From Home. I am a student of the Inthok martial arts. And one of the quotes from the founder of this school of thought, one cannot control the universe, but they can control their reactions to it. And in doing so, change the course of reality. I thank you for your time and May the cold moon continue to shine. Ensign designs out. Good luck, Ensign. And the uh, screen goes blank. The two of you are there, and the floor is yours. Uh -huh. I'm glad we were able to help, but I'm not sure that's the end of how we will have to deal with that in the future. Yeah, I don't think I like those two. I think they're good engineers and scientists, but they're not going to stop asking questions. That's what makes them good officers, but Do they're they either going to get in trouble or they're going to have to get read in at some point. At the very least, we need to put this in the log to put this to Commander Tobor's attention so that he can run this up the flag to the appropriate authorities to keep an eye on these two. Yes, of course. Uh, I just really hope it doesn't wind up hurting their career at all. They're too good to have this hurt them. All right. And with that, we close the scene. Thank you very much. This was a lot of fun. This was a neat little piece. For those who happen to be anywhere on the East Coast when I'm doing live events out there, you too can join Tabletop Journeys at one of our STA tables and play members of various Aegis teams as they go throughout the Talarian sector doing various missions for Aslan Station and such. And look forward to having you join us at those tables. Look forward to seeing the two of you at our next recording session. Thank you for giving me five threat to throw to Joe and to Glenn. They are going to love starting a game with seven threat, even though there's only two players. We're still and, getting tossed out in an airlock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, definitely. But it'll be fun. You'll be going with you the whole way. <laughs> Thanks so much uh, for joining me on a happy, uh, sunny Saturday. Hopefully it's sunny. Um, really appreciate it. Great talking with you again, and uh, we'll see you soon.